All right, I think that it has let everyone in, so I'm gonna go ahead and get things kicked off. Um, I'm just gonna give a short background on what we are hoping to accomplish with the One Glendale planning process. Um, I became the chair of the community council back in January and uh, served on the board of directors before that time. And there seemed to be several consistent themes that came up regularly. So folks would come to us um, for an example with an issue with a specific park or with a specific crosswalk. Um, and those issues all have similar themes. So what we wanted to do is conduct this community-wide planning process to essentially give us some guardrails for the community council board as far as priorities. So we are not trying to recreate any of the master plans that exist. Uh, we're not trying to conflict with anything that exists. Basically what we're trying to do is evaluate what exists and create a strategic roadmap, if you will, for the community council board um, so that we can really identify consistent themes that are throughout the neighborhood and create you know, a five year or 10 year uh, plan, if you will, that will act as a strategic vision for the community council. Um, what we're hoping to do tonight, and before I turn it over to Lily and Brandon, I'd just like to thank you all for giving us an hour of your time tonight. Um, we may run a little bit over that. Feel free to drop off if you have to. Um, the meeting is being recorded, so if you do have to drop off, um, I will make sure in, to get you either minutes or the recording um, of this event. But just thank you all for participating and giving us your time tonight. And with that, I'll turn it over to Lily and Brandon. Yeah, thank right. you. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Um, Turner, am I able to share my screen? Yes, it should let you. Okay. All right, so I am just going to share some slides here so that we can all kind of um, have something to guide the meeting and see you know, exactly where we are. Um, can everybody see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great, cool. Um, so, uh, like, again, thank you all for uh, joining us at this meeting today. Um, I know Lily and I are both very excited to start working on this project. Um, and so I guess without further ado, to kind of make best use of our time, um, I'll just kind of start getting right into it. Um, so this is kind of our agenda for the night here. Um, we will we'll start off with brief introduction. So Lily and I will introduce ourselves and then we'll go around and have everybody on the steering committee kind of uh, do some short introductions just so we all can get to know each other because I'm sure we don't all um, know each other uh, quite yet. And then we'll get into um, some of the focus areas that we were thinking of uh, focusing on in this project. And then we'll get into um, some of the ongoing interest in the involvement with the focus areas that you all might have. Um, and then we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. This is not going to be necessarily like exactly um, the right times here. This is just kind of the time we thought we would allocate for each of these sections. Um, but we'll try to keep the meeting as um, brief as possible because we know that you're all very busy people. So. Um, so I guess we can start with uh, the intern introductions. Lily, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, yeah, thank you all for joining. Um, it's exciting to see a bunch of voices that hopefully we'll be working with for the next little bit. And um, yeah, thank you, Turner, for organizing everyone. It's kind of a hard task sometimes. So, all right, yeah. Um, I'm a second year student um, in the MCMP, which is Master of City and Metropolitan Planning Department at the University of Utah. And we have the opportunity there to hone in on different specializations. So I'm trying to emphasize some of my classes and focus on small town and resort town planning. And that's mainly with communities that are gateways to different types of unique sets of assets, um, like national parks, national forests, BLM, stuff like that, um, just having to coordinate with a lot of different people. And my undergrad background was in planning public policy and management from University of Oregon. And after I graduated, I worked as a community planner and GIS analyst.
for a community consulting private firm in Durango, Colorado. I've also worked as a special projects manager for different advocacy nonprofits and trails maintenance organizations. Um, I was also an intern for the city manager and a parks and recreation board member. Um, and that was all in Durango, Colorado for the last eight or so years, but that's a little bit about me. All right, um, and I'm Brandon Syracuse. Um, I'm also a second year MCMP student at the University of Utah, and I am specializing in smart growth, which um, essentially is land use and transportation kind of combined into one, um, one specialty. My undergraduate background is in environmental science from St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, so I kind of have um, perspective on urban issues that kind of is rooted in sustainability. Um, and my previous experience, uh, it's not quite as extensive as Lily's. Um, I was an intern for a year at a nonprofit planning organization in the city of St. Louis. Um, and it was kind of two internships combined into one. So I was doing community development work as well as safety and security work for some neighborhoods in St. Louis. Um, and I did that uh, for about a year before moving here to Utah. Um, all right, so we will, we'd like to go around uh, the steering committee and have everybody kind of do short introductions. Um, we'll have you say your name, your affiliation with the Glendale community, why you decided to join the steering committee, um, what you're hoping for the One Glendale plan to achieve and how much you would like to be involved in this project throughout the whole process. So um, Lily, you might be able to see the um, participants better than I can right now since I have the slides up. Would you be yeah. able to call yeah. And I was gonna say, I'm not trying to be rude, I'm looking down, but I'm taking notes. Um, so yeah, we're asking you know, several questions and I know there are a lot of participants today, but this is gonna be kind of um, an important piece for us just to know who we're working with and what you guys can bring to the table because it's really gonna be a lot of us listening to what this community wants um, for the next several months, hopefully. So, all right. Um, I just have my participants, I believe, as sort of alphabetical. So if we wouldn't mind starting with Abe Barlow, put you on the spot. Yeah, thanks for uh, s starting there. Well, uh, my name is Abe Barlow. I grew up in the Glendale area uh, and bought a house here uh, about five years ago. Uh, I was actually corresponding with Turner on some the ninth west the condition of 900 west uh, with the cement in front of the park and the noise that it it generates and based off of that Turner said uh, that he was putting together the one to, one Glendale plan and thought that based off some of our discussions it would make sense for us to work together and kind of make the make the bigger plan into action um, and I I can be pretty heavily involved I have decent availability great that's awesome um, and we'll go on more throughout the meeting kind of discussing uh, different focus areas and I know a lot of you have already taken the time to fill out the survey so thank you and for those of you who haven't there's still time, but um, we'll, we'll discuss more on how much you can be involved. So Abe, I appreciate that. That's great. Um, the next one I have is Amy May. Hello, um, I'm Amy May. I'm the executive director of Tree Utah and we do planting projects in Glendale every year. Um, this year, we've only done two so far, but with COVID, we've had far fewer events than we like to do. Um, even though we're a statewide organization, our offices are just on the west side of Salt Lake City, not quite in Glendale, but we really like to work in our, our local um, area as much as possible. And I'm also, a, um, I've lived in Glendale since I moved to Salt Lake City from Moab in 2001. So um, I'm here and have gone to community council meetings on and off through the years whenever I can and really saw this um, and was interested and want to listen and learn and contribute however I can. So both as you know seeing how we can just contribute to the overall plan but just 
also adding insight and helping to represent the neighborhood. So. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. We'll definitely pick your brain, I'm sure. Um, all right, Brian Black. Yes, hello. Uh, I actually uh, born and raised in Glendale, lived here my entire life. Uh, joined primarily uh, due to concerns over uh, different development. So being uh, homes I see go up in my neighborhood or you know what's going on with uh, the former Raging Waters facility and anything of that nature. I, as a uh, longtime resident and uh, homeowner here, I'm uh, very concerned. Perfect. Yeah, thanks for that. I think um, when I've read some of the responses so far on the survey, but I think a big takeaway is that um, we're everyone's kind of on board with really valuing the current, future, and past residents of Glendale um, and getting their perspectives on ongoing projects and hopefully some direction we can take with some of those projects. So thank you, Brian. Uh, all right, the next Brian, which is Brian Tinetti. Yeah, thank you. Um, Brian Tinetti, Executive Director of the Seven Canyons Trust. Um, we are currently um, working really intimately with um, the city on the Three Creeks Confluence project. Um, it's a project we originally proposed as uh, University of Utah students back in 2014 and have kind of perpetuated through the city, um, ultimately culminating it in its current construction um, down there at, at 13 South and, and 9th West. Um, I also worked as the program and, and uh, uh, project manager at the Jordan River Commission um, prior to me moving full time as the executive director um, up until September. So I worked there for about five years. So um, pretty intimately know the, the Jordan River and, and the, the creeks that feed it. Nice. Yeah, thanks, Brian. I know a few of our projects definitely involve the Jordan River and Seven Canyons. So, um, and then I have Calvin, but I do not have your last name, Calvin. Hey, uh, my name's Calvin Smothers. Um, and I'm resident here. I live here in Glendale and I love this neighborhood. And um, we, we know Brian actually, and we're really thankful to see all that construction work going on. It's gonna be awesome little setup there. Um, so my affiliation is living here. I decided to join, you know, through my wife, she gets connected to some of this stuff and she passed along. I have a lot of kind of neighborhood community development work in my past. Um, and I've been wanting to get involved, so I'm excited to kind of see what, what's, uh, how I can get involved. My big hope here is just kind of a really unified neighborhood um, that kind of is super inclusive and can just um, really speak of that. You know, it's, um, especially during these times, it's been a really tough time, I think, for a lot of folks. So it's, it'd be a great, great way to uh, see how we can really make this a one Glendale plan. Um, and I'll be available as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Um, Cindy Christensen. If we could put you on the spot. Maybe you're still muted. Okay, I am. I'm still here. Um, I, I've been a resident at, um, in Glendale for 26 years. Um, it's been an interesting neighborhood full of diversity. And I just wanna find out some of the purposes behind some of the projects that are being done because they impact my family and my property. So that's why I wanted to be part of this. Yeah, awesome. That'll definitely be an ongoing conversation, keeping everyone in the loop with um, possible projects and then their possible implications and um, Definitely will keep everyone involved. Um, the next one I had, Cody Egan. Do we still have you, Cody? I think it's muted. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Cody, and I've been living in Glendale for about three years. And I got involved through a survey done for keep. Glendale beautiful, but I got my master's in urban planning and 
I'm currently a case manager for chronically homeless uh, individuals. And so I really uh, wanted to get involved and try to help get the opinions of uh, residents of the community that might traditionally not be engaged or not really know uh, all the wonderful benefits of that. And I am available to be uh, highly involved in this project. <laughs> Sweet, thank you. Yeah, that's gonna be a pretty important element for this project, definitely. All right, Damien. Hey everyone, so I am the intern working with Glendale. Can everyone hear me? Okay, great. So I'm going to be working on the Keep Glendale Beautiful initiative, um, which ultimately aims to make us an affiliate with uh, the Keep America Beautiful initiative or national program. And it's gonna give us some direction in the future um, to keeping Glendale litter free, increase recycling, and also to uh, decrease graffiti. I don't currently live in Glendale, so I don't know if that's an issue, but if it is, we're going to, uh, we're gonna work on it in my, uh, in this next year that I'm working with Glendale. Um, so I am not a member of the steering committee, uh, but I do hope to be heavily involved with uh, the One Glendale project. Um, there's a lot of overlap in One Glendale and also uh, the Keep Glendale Beautiful initiative. So you guys will probably be seeing my face in the future. Perfect, yeah, we're definitely planning on working at some point hand in hand with Keep Glendale Beautiful. So that'll be part of the conversation. Um, Danielle, Susie Dittmore. Yeah, hi. Yeah, my last name's hyphenated. It, it gets confusing for some people because Susie's like a first name. Um, yes, my name is Danielle Susie Dittmore. Um, I have lived in Utah for four years. My husband and I moved here from Chicago um, on election day 2016. It was not intentional and it just sort of happened. We've lived in Glendale for a year and a half and we love Glendale. Um, it feels more like Chicago than a lot of other parts of Utah. And so um, I think we're, we're happy to be here. Um, I was sort of talking to Turner about just general interest in the Glendale Community Council. And he invited me to be part of the steering committee. Um, I'm great. I'm grateful to be here with all of you. Um, overall, like my, I, I've, I like to say I'm like a recovering journalist and I was formerly a legislative aide in the Massachusetts State Senate. Um, I'm originally from Boston and I work in higher ed. So I work at Salt Lake Community College. Um, I am a staff member there and I also teach there and teach at the University of Utah. Um, I am generally interested across the board in everything that I do in supporting um, access initiatives. So important, supporting people with disabilities, supporting people who speak other languages um, and, and people who experience homelessness. Um, and I'm also really interested in increasing and advancing resources for residents as well. And so um, I can be moderately involved. We'll say that because I have quite a schedule, but I'm happy to be moderately involved. Thank you. Great. Yeah, no, thank you. That'll be good to have some connections with SLCC also. Um, I have David Troster. Troster. Are you with us, David? You might be muted. All right, we can come back to David. Um, Gina? Hi. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Hi, I'm Gina Hyatt. Um, I am a long-term resident of Glendale. I moved into the neighborhood with 19, in 1990. 
uh, with my then two-year-old daughter. Um, I've seen a lot of changes in Glendale. I've heard a lot of promises of things that were going to happen to Glendale, improvements that were going to be made, shopping that was going to be made, um, and nothing has ever followed through. Uh, city council makes lots of promises. The mayor's office makes lots of promises. So I'm, you know, I'm very interested in, of course, Raging Waters because I live close to Raging Waters and drive by it every day um, and what's happening there. Also, the homeless encampments that have taken up residence on 17th South and 21st South and do occasionally filter actually into our streets in our neighborhoods um, that we have to call authorities to have them removed. And, and just overall changes uh, in this neighborhood. Um, there seems to be, as, as I grew, I came to this neighborhood as a younger person and as a Glendale elder now, um, there's a lot more younger groups moving into the neighborhood who don't really seem to um, take a lot of pride in their yards and their yard work and I, I guess it's it's kind of a younger thing with grasses going brown and trees that are planted by the city being killed due to lack of watering so I would really like to be a voice of the elder group because I think we do have an opinion uh, we do have uh, concerns but we don't like to get out very often. So I would like to be that voice of the elders and to speak with the elder population in the neighborhood and see how I can get them involved in, in this motion and, and have our voice and concerns also heard. Yeah, thank you. We definitely are trying to figure out some creative ways to um, not only hear different perspectives, but provide different opportunities, whether that's on Zoom or through different community engagement activities. So, you know, some people, whether it's work or family or um, just ability, can't always make those um, different community in-person events, especially in lieu of COVID-19. So um, right. part of this next future soon to happen phase of the One Glendale plan will include hopefully some ways to increase different diversity and voices involved with this plan. So thanks, Gina. Um, David, do we want to try with you again? Yeah, let's try that. <laughs> the, the unmute in the little square didn't work, but it works at the bottom. So I'm David Trostar. I live in Glendale, obviously. I've lived here for 11 years. And uh, like most of us have invested in my house and property and want to see the neighborhood get better. I live very close to the Jordan River Parkway, very close to the new Three Creeks Confluence Park, yet to be opened or completed, <laughs> delayed again and again. Um, and also close then to the, to the rest of the adjoining parks there, the Bend in the River and uh, Modesto Park. The Jordan Park was one of the best benefits that we have, I think, in the neighborhood. It's also um, a vehicle for uh, aberrant behavior and illegal activity, too. So one of my biggest concerns is security in the neighborhood, and that comes from experience right in my neighborhood So and at my house. So that's kind of my focus, and just make the neighborhood better. Sweet. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, Evis. Oh, hello, um, everyone. Uh, I am an assistant professor in city and metropolitan planning. I am so glad um, to see so many uh, students and also alumni and affiliates of uh, city and metropolitan um, planning. Um, so this uh, semester, I am teaching a class on community engagement in planning and I am um, involving my students um, with the public lands division and their master plan. And um, there's a lot of overlap of um, the thinking about um, the different parks um, 
Damian actually is like taking that class. So I think that he will be doing some surveys <laughs> in Glendale. Um, I just learned that Glendale has uh, three mini parks, three tail, three uh, or two mini parks, um, three community uh, parks, of course, like a golf course um, and three trails. So it will be like gathering surveys about um, those spaces. My interest was also to involve the class in some focus groups um, with like groups that um, usually don't, we don't hear in surveys. So I know that a few people talked about um, homeless individuals. Um, I am also interested through like university neighborhood partners um, of involving the Latino community, Pacific Islanders, Som Somali community. So my idea was um, to see if we can have two focus groups and focus on two parks. Uh, Lillian Brandon sent a very nice survey um, and we can identify the key priorities. Part of the idea is to also do some walkabouts and um, invite um, people from public lands staff. Um, so they also listen to what are the needs of the community. And um, they also mentioned that they could um, think about implementation projects even before the master plan is done. So that's like a very good um, opportunity. Um, and, and maybe, you know, some of those promises that have been made, it's time to, <laughs> to get those um, done as like uh, Gina was um, expressing. Um, and uh, so also the idea of like um, getting involved this semester through this class is that for the next class, which is the West High Studio, we can um, try to find what to do. Um, in that class, we have done things like um, festivals um, and we have done other kinds of community engagement. Um, we have also painted murals and are done signage. So kind of like little implementation projects. Um, to see what we can do and actually like um, Elizabeth and um, she will be like helping me a student at CMP to coordinate much of the of the West Side Studio. Um, so I'm very excited about seeing all the different uh, projects going on and see how we can collaborate. Thanks. Yeah, thank you Evis. We're excited to see what that class does too. Um, and the next one would be Jasmine. Hi guys, I am uh, Jasmine Walton and I work for NeighborWorks Salt Lake um, as our community engagement coordinator. Um, and we do a lot of programming on the west side, that's our priority. So, you know, we're really excited to see this one Glendale plan come about. I think it'll be a great thing for the neighborhood and to get more uh, neighbors and community members involved in what they want to prioritize in their neighborhood. Um, and as far as my uh, overall involvement, we're willing to support in any way that we can. And so I'm here to help however that looks. Thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely be in touch um, with NeighborWorks. That'll be great to work with you guys. Um, and then do we have, let's see, Kate Rubalkova. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Kate Rubikava, and in my day job, Sorry. I am the, no, that's okay. Uh, I'm the, um, in my day job, I'm the Chief Executive Officer for the Utah Nonprofits Association, um, but I'm not representing the UNA here. I am a lifelong Westside resident, and I, was born um, into a home that uh, was over in Poplar Grove. And about six years ago, I bought a house here in Glendale. So I'm very involved in the neighborhood and very concerned about the neighborhood and very, um, you know, I, I love this community. I chose to live here for a very specific reason. I love the diversity. I love, um, you know, being able to uh, see my neighbors and talk to my neighbors um, when I'm out walking or when they're out walking. Uh, Danielle and I made a nice connection. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm here to be as involved as I possibly can. And I decided to join the steering committee because Turner asked me and also because I just, you know, love 
uh, love this community. And I can be moderately involved. I have um, lots of things on my plate, but um, if I have some specifics on what needs to be accomplished, I'm happy to hit the pavement and to help recruit um, folks to join and to gather some information um, so that we can have a, a wide breadth of input. Awesome, thank you so much, Kate. Um, Katie Reiser. Hi, good evening, good evening, everyone. I'm Katie Reiser. I'm actually with uh, Salt Lake City's Public Lands in the Trails and Natural Lands Division. Uh, Turner and, and other community members have worked with us uh, very regularly with the number of projects and public spaces that we have in the Glendale community and, and looked for a member of our team to help represent um, and share some insight from the city side. But in, in my, my personal background, um, I've come from a long history of working in really uh, working with diverse populations. I just came to the city back at the start of the new year and previously had spent the last uh, five or so years up at the National Ability Center in Park City, um, kind of combining my own passions of outdoor recreation, mental health, and working with people of all abilities. So I've invested a lot of, of time and years in uh, instructing folks uh, with physical disabilities, working with military veterans and uh, issues related to PTSD, um, uh, invisible injuries with cognitive and intellectual and um, very invested in the LGBT community as well here in Salt Lake and working with all populations to get out and enjoy the outdoors and our natural lands that we have and in the health and wellness benefits that those spaces can bring to you personally. So I, um, I'm excited to be a part of this conversation from both lens and hope that out of these conversations, really some of the distinct character and community values recognized in the Glendale area and it can, some of our public spaces can be a place to gather and to recreate and to celebrate and to play um, and that there's a lot of pride with what's available for the community. Lily, I think you were muted when you were talking. Yeah, I think Lily's muted this time. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Thanks so much, Katie. <laughs> um, next, I had Carrie Hopkins. Hi, I'm Carrie. I um, am a resident here in Glendale for about 12 years. Um, I've been involved with the community council here and there off and on for a while, but been a little absent for a bit. Um, I work for the College of Fine Arts at the U and run an outreach program called ArtsBridge. And so I often have students working with youth in West Side schools. And so that may be a way that I can be involved um, with the initiative is when we want to get, um, you know, feedback from, from kids or involve youth in some way. I can connect with the, the art teachers in our local elementary schools and um, be involved that way. Um, also, just general background in the arts. So I'm happy to see how I might be able to help. I can be at least moderately involved in the process. Thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely want to include a variety of voices and that's both diversities, but also um, different ages as well. So we'll definitely hit you up for that connection, Carrie. Um, and Liz, you can give an introduction if you'd like, or skip if you'd like. I'm Liz. I am also a second year master's student at the U. Um, I spent the last year uh, um, supporting UNP and the West Side Coalition, and Evie's kind of already mentioned and helping with the West Side Studio. So just here to support. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, we'll definitely be working pretty closely and careful not to overlap too much with the West Side Studio um, and hopefully use some data from each other's findings. And next I had Merlin. That's me. Hi, nice to meet everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, thanks. Oh, very good. Um, my name is Merlin Hubbard. 
Uh, I moved into Glendale 11 years ago. I'm a Southern California boy, so I transferred up here and worked at the Boeing facility and Northrop, retired now. And uh, uh, I joined because it's my neighborhood and I like to know what's happening. And if I can contribute, I will. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say. I just like to listen. You definitely have my opinion when I, <laughs> when, when I feel like giving it. Uh, so whatever you guys need, let me know and I'll try to help. Thanks, Merlin. Yeah, we're happy to have you. Um, all right, next I had Sarah Wolf. Am I on? Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be on here, but um, yeah, Sarah Wolf, um, me and my partner just moved into the Glendale area. Uh, we're relatively new to Salt Lake in general, having just moved here about a year ago from Oregon. And um, I know there's a fellow U of O or uh, my partner, is just finishing up his PhD at University of Oregon. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm just really invested in community. And so I think right now I'm in a place where I'm kind of learning about the community rather than um, feeling like I'm ready to give input on the community. Um, I, I am glad I know that like the first, I'm the one who said, I sent a little chat there about the, um, the fact that most of the people on the committee are, are white and the vast majority of people living in this neighborhood are are latinx um, and then the next largest is the asian population so i would just like to see a little bit more diversity on the steering committee um, other than that i'm just interested in joining these meetings and kind of hearing where people are going. I work in uh, event planning, um, mostly in the arts. So I'm a, I'm a fellow arts administrator. Um, yeah, I'm just, in, I'm invested in community. So I'm really interested in being a part in some way, I would say maybe moderately involved. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much, Sarah. And yeah, you're definitely correct in realizing who's logged into today's meeting. And um, we've been, Brandon Turner and I have been um, pretty aware of the voices that we often hear from in the planning process and the voices that live and participate in different organizations um, in Glendale and the West Side at large. So um, we're definitely trying to get as many voices to the table as possible that said, you know, things like Zoom meetings and um, using forms of internet-based activity aren't always possible for everyone to log into. So that's why we're trying to do a variety of different meeting types um, to try to address that from the get-go. But yeah, no, it's um, definitely important to get Latinx and Pacific Islanders and as many people as possible to the table for the One Glendale Plan. That's been probably one of the biggest points of emphasis for sure. Um, and then I had Taylor Thurman. Hi, um, I am Taylor and I'm a new resident in the community. My mother actually grew up at, in the street behind where I own my house and I am interested in joining this committee. Just I have experience um, background in social work largely from a macro perspective, community organizing and community development experience. Um, I'm also a Spanish speaker and am interested in helping do outreach to help engage with some of these communities um, and voices that aren't here or who may not be able to easily access an all English meeting. Um, and I don't have any particular agenda other than to support the efforts I have, thanks to COVID, plenty of free time <laughs> to help. So as much or as little as anybody here needs. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, we'll 
probably definitely hook you up. We were um, discussing different organizations that we can pair with, hopefully, um, especially in lieu of speaking Spanish. Um, and, you know, transparently, I don't speak very good Spanish, um, but I come from a community that um, that was a big emphasis. Um, instead, I chose French for not any huge reason. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely need to partner with people um, in order to get more voices to the table. So, all right. And then I think that's all I had in terms of people who are on the participation list or participants list. Um, so we can move on. Did, before we move on, did we miss anybody by accident? If so, you can yeah. unmute yourself and speak up. Sweet. Okay. Sounds like we're good to move on. All right. Um, so introductions took a little bit longer than I anticipated because I think we have more people on the steering committee than I thought we would, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about what the One Glendale plan is supposed to be. Turner kind of mentioned it at the beginning, but basically we want to create some sort of um, like coherent and detailed vision for the future of the Glendale community. Um, generally speaking, it's going to cover mostly short to medium term goals um, and we will build on existing city plans like the um, the general plan for Salt Lake City, the West Side Master Plan and other documents that we can scrounge up in our research because um, we don't want to, you know, duplicate any efforts that have been done in the past. Um, it'll be a heavily community driven process and we're still in the process of kind of figuring out what that community involvement is going to look like um, but we do want it to be like very much rooted in community input um, and the plan will be specific to just the Glendale neighborhood uh, which might be a little hard to see but there's a little map on this um, on this slide here that shows the rough boundary of the Glendale neighborhood um, you have the eastern part between I-215 and I-15 that's mostly the residential area and then everything west of that kind of west of Redwood Road is uh, generally um, an industrial area, but it's all part of the neighborhood. Um, so our goal here is not to make like an official city plan that'll be adopted by the, the city council necessarily, um, but we and we hope that we'll end up creating something that the that Turner and the Glendale Community Council can use to help advocate for the neighborhood um, when it comes to city planning discussions and other sorts of advocacy with um, you know people who make decisions that affect the Glendale neighborhood. And the timeline for this plan, at least the creation of the plan, is going to be about a year. So, um, and we're just getting started now. So by the time we get to next summer, there should be a, um, a finalized plan in place. Um, Lily, do you have anything to add about that? Um, no, I don't think so. And we'll, we'll discuss more of what we're looking for. And I think, yeah, like you said, it's not to duplicate any efforts and hopefully in it not being an adopted city plan, it gives us more room for creativity um, and making some tangible and feasible ideas for implementation strategies for these different quote unquote focus areas that um, we've discussed with Turner. And those are subject to change depending on um, priorities from what we hear from you guys and other voices in the neighborhood. So. Yeah. Great. Um, so today we just kind of wanted to mostly just introduce you all to the focus areas of the plan. Um, we've come up with eight of them so far. Um, Lily, would you like to talk about these or do you want me to talk about them? Um, you can start. How's that? Okay, sure. Um, so we've got these eight focus areas that have come out of, I guess, uh, conversations that uh, Turner has had in the past with people and just general community input. So there's uh, Raging Waters, uh, Bend in the River, Modesto Park, the uh, Three Three Creeks Confluence, um, transportation in general, which would include anything from roads to bike lanes, trails, um, e-scooters, things like that. Um, Glendale Park, uh, waste recycling and sustainability, and then finally the Jordan River and the trail that kind of goes along it. Um, so these are the eight things that we've come up with so far. It's not necessarily a finalized list whatsoever. Um, so what we kind of wanted to do today is get some of your initial thoughts on these focus areas um, and also um, get some input to see if we've missed any of these. 
or miss anything that could be added onto this onto this list. Um, Lily, do you have anything to add to this? Um, yeah, I was going to say we have started getting some responses, which this was asked in the survey. Um, we've started getting some responses and we, we've just started looking at those. Um, however, we haven't stopped the survey by any means. So um, we haven't looked in depth. So um, forgive us if you've mentioned it in the survey, but um, definitely these are some standout projects that we have heard um, about wanting some priority with, but um, yeah, these are by no means concrete and we can do a round robin thing or for the sake of time, if anyone just had um, a couple ideas or if we missed anything, feel free to just like Brandon said, unmute yourself. Or you can add it in the chat also. So in the chat, um, Kate said she thinks it's a good list and for the short term, we should be careful not to add too much. Um, if there's too much, then we risk the chance of not doing certain things or I guess missing some things. Um, that's a great point, Kate. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about that or does that kind of summarize what your thoughts were? No, I'm happy to. I just, I just think that if we've only got a year plan, I mean, Gina hit the nail on the head when she talked about how we have for years been promised certain things and projects will start to work and then deteriorate. And so if we legitimately only have a year and, you know, no disrespect to the University of Utah and, um, all of the educators who are uh, with us here today and who are gonna be working behind the scenes to make this happen. But if we're also working for a year, but then also further milling that down into semesters, then we lose critical time. And if we add anything else onto this list, we risk the chance of biting off more than we can chew. And the worst thing any resident because it's happened to me more than a dozen times, the worst thing that any resident can um, do in participation of something like this is have to be left with uh, cleaning up a mess that wasn't been a that hasn't been able to be fulfilled by students that are doing projects in our community. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's a really great point. Um, I think that's another um, thing and you know we were both put in contact for this um, project because we were passionate about the direction it could potentially go um, but I think it's important to note too um, Turner's interest and involvement and direction from the get-go with it um, and although that's you know on sort of a timeline for us um, whether that's a good or bad thing um, I absolutely understand not just in a way wasting time, wasting resources to have another plan that just sits on a shelf um, and wasting your time, frankly. So um, we're gonna really try to emphasize, it is a visioning document, but we're gonna try to focus it on tangible efforts um, and things that can hopefully be done and partner you with different budget and funding options to actually get those done um, within different time periods, whether that's within Turner's time as chair um, of the Glendale Community Council, or um, hopefully just sometime in the near future where it doesn't just, like you said, become a mess or an ongoing project that gets nowhere. So yeah, that's a really good point. We're definitely gonna do what we can to not have that happen. Thanks, Kate. Are there any other ideas maybe for this list? If not, um, or if something comes to you later, feel free to reach out or submit the survey. That would be good too. I'll put a link to that in the chat as well. Great. All right, um, so originally we had planned to um, in this meeting kind of go through and have everybody talk about uh, what they would like which topics they'd be interested in working with directly. Um, Lily, I don't know if we have enough time left to do that. 
Um, um, I would say too, with um, the intros that everyone gave, I think several people had some standout things that relate to this list um, and relate to other voices that we can bring to the table. And if you maybe have something that you want to present now, that's great. I would also say um, there are specific projects that I've kind of um, noted for certain people to be involved with, so. Yeah, I think maybe what we can do for this is just after the meeting, um, kind of follow up with people via email yeah. Um, yeah. and more directly just kind of get, um, you know, some input about which topics you might be involved in working in. I think that would be uh, a better way to do this. Um, let's see, in the chat, uh, Taylor said, if we are collecting many items in these early stages, I assume there will be a chance to gather input on priorities and narrow it down a bit. Um, yes, uh, we definitely will be able to narrow down like some really more specific priorities in this in this project over the course of this year. Um, that's uh, hopefully what we will end up with in our final document. Um, and Lily, do you have any thoughts about that? Sorry, I was just posting that link. Um, so yeah, these are more or less um, gonna be what we hone in on for the plan, whether that's through chapters and different strategy periods and implementation things. Um, but we'll definitely, for the first, starting now, basically after this meeting, so it's hopefully what it was gonna be aimed in collecting your guys' input and everyone's involvement. And then Brandon and I, like you said, we'll do some follow-up emailing hopefully and schedule some one-on-ones to get further input from you guys so that we don't host monthly meetings unless that's something that everyone wants, but um, to just instead kind of get necessary information. And um, if you have other people that would like to be involved, we can get their involvement. But I think, um, yeah, definitely right now, just steering it in a point where we can prioritize these by group, could be by parks, um, or narrowing it down a bit for sure, depending on if things are coincidal. So, sorry, that was really just talking in circles, but I think overall we're gonna um, not necessarily add too many things to the list, but hone in on um, the different processes that involve each project and maybe um, if one is much more comprehensive than another, it's like for the um, raging waters, for instance, like that's going to be a pretty involved process. So um, yeah, figuring out where to focus efforts. Definitely. Um, I know uh, Merlin, I missed that uh, before I saw Taylor's comment, but Merlin in the chat said, are we going to prioritize the items? Um, and like each individual item uh, kind of will have its own like little standalone section in in whatever final document we produce. Um, and, you know, parks and transportation and sustainability are all like different things. So I think um, prioritizing them may not be like the best idea in terms of saying like, oh, transportation is the most important part of this project or the Three Creeks is the most important. Um, it's kind of all just supposed to form kind of like a, a overall vision for the neighborhood that, you know, when working with the city and the people who make the decisions and fund the projects, um, we can turn to this plan or, or Turner and the community council can turn to this plan and say, here's what we as a neighborhood would like to see um, and how, how can we make that happen as best as possible in the future. Um, Kate in the chat said, should we um, connect people to Turner if they want to get involved? And as Lily just posted in the chat, um, by all means, yes, please contact Turner um, if you know somebody who'd like to get involved because we'd like to have as many people involved in this process as possible. Um, Lily posted our contact information in this in the chat. Um, so feel free to copy those uh, email addresses down and put this in your address book. We're happy to talk to you at any time during this process. Um, all right, so one last thing before we get to Q and A's is um, we just kind of want to talk about what the final product of this plan would look like. Um, we are thinking that it's probably going to culminate in some sort of document 
like most plans do, that will kind of outline the process that we took to get to the final product and um, kind of give an overview of each topic and each focus area and what the community um, input has led to. Um, and we just kind of want to get everyone's thoughts. Um, whoever has anything they'd like to add, you can either put it in the chat or uh, unmute yourself and just kind of talk. Um, but what maybe like specifically would you like to see as a final deliverable? What would you like this? Um, what would you like this plan to look like basically? All right, so Kate says, um, like I'd say keep the plan simple and have deliverables and also attach timelines to it. Um, that's yep. a great point. Keeping it simple is always great because the simpler it is, the more accessible it is to everybody who might be interested in reading it. Um, if it gets too technical, then I think it starts to become something that um, is not really helpful when it comes to engaging the general community. Um, and then timelines for sure would be a great thing to contribute, uh, to include in this plan. So we'll, we'll definitely keep that in mind. Yeah, and in terms of it um, maintaining itself as, like Turner mentioned, a visioning document um, that can kind of go both ways, that can be something that's um, very specific um, for these plans, which is kind of what we're looking for is tangible efforts um, and timelines attached to those different priority areas, um, as well as visioning documents can also be sort of vague um, meaning, you know, we want this community to embrace X, Y, or Z. It can be kind of both ways. And Brandon and I are trying to hopefully work towards building a plan that is less vague and more feasible and implementable um, with implementation and diversity kind of being two of more of the specific areas of emphasis within this plan. So each of these quote unquote focus areas will include timelines, strategies, goals, um, and those will be shaped by input from the community and residents. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, I saw a comment from Danielle. Yeah. Uh, regardless of the outcome or final deliverable, I would mostly like to see projects that are sustainable and engage the community. Um, that's great to hear. Uh, sustainability will be a, a, at least, you know, a key portion of this um, this plan overall and engaging the community will be super important. Um, we hope to have some good community engagement activities to get this plan created and then hopefully the community council can continue to um, follow in that tradition of community engagement. Um, Cody says uh, the product can be more uh, of a living product that can be adaptable to change, uh, something that won't become outdated easily. And that's also a great point. Um, I think it's important to emphasize that whatever we come up with in this year long process is not the end all be all. Um, you know, community development and community planning is an ongoing process. Um, and so whatever we create will be the first step um, in many over, over the years to come that will, uh, you know, help kind of guide the community in the direction it wants to go in. Um, so yeah, a living, living document would be really, really important idea. Um, David says a four page or fewer document listing the vision, goals, and time frame. We may have to prioritize in that document. Um, that's a great point. Um, we may uh, end up going a little over four pages with uh, our main document because, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of details uh, to probably report in this, but um, it would definitely be possible to create more of like a short, you know, three or four page summary of the of the end final document just so that if somebody wants to just see a quick overview and not have to read a super long document that can be something that you know Turner could send out to anybody who requests it um, so that's a yeah. great idea yeah we can definitely do that uh, Kate says she'd like to see it translated into at least Spanish um, if residents are aware of what they can do they're more likely to implement and live it and that's uh, Super great point. Um, we do need to make sure that this plan is accessible to the Latinx community um, and potentially any other communities who uh, might speak different languages other than Spanish or English. Um, that will be very important to make sure that it's accessible. 
Um, Taylor says deliverables also accessible online and in Spanish. Uh, another great point. Yeah, we want to make sure this document will be um, easily accessible to everybody. Uh, so maybe we could consider posting it on the Glendale Community Council website as maybe like a downloadable PDF um, or a link to a Google Drive file, something along those lines. Um, and Lily is taking notes on all this. So we'll have all this input mm -hmm. uh, to consider after the meeting. Um, Sarah says making the plan uh, potentially bilingual so it can be shared with those who don't speak fluent English. Again, great point. Um, Abe says Taylor and I have a friend who has done a lot of written translation as well. Um, so that's great to know. Maybe we can get in contact with you and see if your friend who um, has done translation in the past might be willing to help us out. Um, and then Merlin says, by prioritizing, I believe, picking the low-hanging fruit first and gain successes in baby steps. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, there will definitely be some like low-hanging fruit and just easy opportunities uh, to improve the community that will probably come out of this planning process. And there will definitely be some more um, difficult to achieve stuff. Um, you know, it'll be kind of a mixed bag of different things. Um, yeah, and, especially since, you know, yeah. some projects like Brian Tanetti was mentioning are currently underway and some are at a full standstill. So it'll be a variety of different um, timelines and outcomes and definitely uh, gaining some small successes would be excellent. Yeah. Um, let's see, Cody says, I'd like to see involvement of teens and children in the process to help in expanding traditional feedback process. Um, yeah, Lily and I actually were talking before this meeting about um, some potential ways to get youth involved in this planning process because that's a key demographic that's often overlooked in the planning process. Um, there's a kind of a, a concept or a theory uh, in the planning world of designing cities for uh, or communities and cities for people who are eight and people who are 80. So if you can make a, um, a community work for people in that age range and everything in between, um, you know, you'll have a city that works for everybody or a community that works for everybody. So that would be very important. Um, and we would welcome any feedback on how to get teens and youth involved in the planning process because uh, that's been a traditionally difficult demographic to reach out to. Yeah, and like Carrie mentioned too, was a good um, connection. She had mentioned working with some West Side schools. Um, so that might be one lead. Definitely. But yeah, that's a good point. Thanks, Cody. All right, and I think that is all the comments that have come in so far. Um, Lily, do you have anything you want to say? At this um, and, you know, the survey, it did discuss different focus areas. It was also pretty heavy in getting your input on different types of communication that you receive or what works for you or what doesn't work for you through Glendale specifically. So um, what channels you're subscribed to or where you get your info or how you meet with your neighbors and community. So we were toying with the idea of um, posting things online more regularly as updates to the one Glendale plan and also potentially the Keep Glendale Beautiful um, plan that's um, occurring also simultaneously with um, Damien, like he mentioned. So um, if anyone had any feedback there, if you think that would be something that people won't tune into, that's absolutely fine too. We just want to make sure it's also a transparent process and you aren't just wondering, oh, you know, I logged into this meeting in August, what's happening? Um, is anything happening? So um, we're going to try to hopefully post some updates online, um, both from the survey and from different deliverables. We might have smaller deliverables along the way before the actual one Glendale plan is drafted and complete, so. Yeah. Um, Carrie just added in the chat, uh, we can also work with kids at Youth City and the Sorensen Center, which is a great idea, I think. Um, Carrie says she's happy to work on making those connections and facilitating activities for youth input, so. Uh, Carrie will definitely be in touch about that. 
Um, Sarah asked if TikTok could be used somehow to reach teens, and I think that's a great idea, as long as it doesn't get banned. <laughs> um, that could be, you know, that's an interesting, interesting idea to explore. I'm not a, a particularly skilled TikToker myself, but if anybody has experience <laughs> with that or would like to help out, um, we'd be willing to get some ideas from you or yeah. uh, help in some way. Yeah. Danielle says teens can smell imposters and you're absolutely right. So I'm not gonna even attempt to make a TikTok myself. <laughs> um, Taylor said uh, his, uh, uh, Taylor said their friends at Youth City, their friend works at Youth City and would be happy to help out. Um, so that's great to know. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll definitely be in touch about that. Um, all right. And then um, if you all have any just kind of like other lingering thoughts about how to get the community involved in the OGP process in general, that'd be great to hear about too. Um, you know, teens are, are one demographic, but obviously there's many demographics within the Glendale neighborhood, whether that's on the basis of race and, eth race and ethnicity or uh, gender or sexuality or um, whatever it might be, we want to make sure that we can get in contact with as many people from different backgrounds as possible. So if you have ideas to get involved, to get the community involved, um, feel free to let us know in the comments. Um, at this point, we're running a little over time, so I want to jump into the Q&A section. Um, if anybody has some uh, lingering uh, Q&A for us or just comments or concerns about the One Glendale plan process, um, please feel free to let us know in the chat and we'll respond to them. Um, we just want to make sure that you guys are all, um, you know, have a full understanding of what's going to be going on with this project and how um, things will be going in the future with this. Yeah. Um, I see in the comments, Kate says we need some next steps in order to encourage others, most often those of us that tune into these meetings are already engaged. That's a great point. Um, a lot of times what happens in you know, community meetings is you get a, a, a certain group of people who are very um, actively engaged and will come to like you know, every community meeting and then you have um, you know, some people who might show up to one or two every so often and then you just have a lot of people that won't show up at all because they either don't know about them or maybe just aren't interested. Um, and we'll definitely be working on some ways to encourage other people to participate for yeah. sure. And hopefully that might occur at some of the upcoming events for both Keep Glendale Beautiful and these walkthroughs, um, as well as maybe some other coordinated events or if you have any connections, um, it, it's, yeah, absolutely a fair point. Um, a lot of voices we've heard from today have um, obviously you're demonstrating interest and ongoing um, interest because a lot of you have been in the Glendale community for a long time. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Danielle asked, um, what frequency does this committee meet? Um, and I think our idea, um, just because this committee is pretty big, we had, I think, you know, 22, 23 people um at the height of it um it's probably going to be a little too difficult to you know have everybody meet as a large group pretty often um so we were thinking of um to get people on this committee involved um more directly and more efficiently in the future we'll hopefully try to um set up one-on-one -on -one interviews with everybody if uh, as long as you're willing to sit down with us um through zoom and and have a little chat about your interests and stuff with the neighborhood. Um, depending on how many people are interested in different topics for the plan, different focus areas, we might try to set up some small group discussions as well. Um, but other than that, um, I don't think that this steering committee meeting will meet um, super, super often. Um, we may have a, you know, a couple or a few more meetings um, throughout the process, but as of right now, we don't have any scheduled necessarily, um, just because everybody's schedule is so different and we don't know when you're all available. Um, so yeah. yeah, hope that answers your question, Danielle. Yeah, so at this point, 
Um, I don't think we have another meeting set, but it's more of, um, you know, that's why we're trying to collect um, how willing people are to participate or if they, or um, with what specific projects. So we'll be scheduling um, sort of a wave of brief, but sort of thorough and more catered to specific projects, um, one-on-ones with many or all of you, um, as well as other people. So that'll be the next phase. But um, if in a month or a few months or several months, um, it becomes evident that having another steering committee meeting, steering committee meeting could be advantageous, um, we'll definitely pick your brains and see if that's something that could happen. Yes, definitely. All right, Gina has to go, it looks like. Uh, thanks for coming, Gina. We appreciate you being here. Yeah, you. Um, are there any other lingering questions um, at this point for us? You can always also email us directly if you have any questions and don't want to announce them to the large group. Um, yeah. All right. Well, doesn't seem like there's any more questions flowing in, so I just want to say thank you all for coming. Um, I know it's been, at this point, about an hour and 15 minutes, so we appreciate your time very, very much. Um, our contact information is on this slide here, so if you'd like to reach us in the future, you know, write down our email address, addresses, take a picture of the screen, screenshot it, whatever, um, and any of us would be happy to respond to your questions or comments or anything. Um, we'll try to reach out individually via email just to um, kind of hone in on your interests and see if we can set up some individual interviews in the future. Um, other than that, I think that concludes the meeting unless Olivia has anything to add. Um, yeah, thank you all for dedicating some time to us today. This was, um, we've been really looking forward to meeting you all and getting an idea of sort of some different directions this could go and what you want from this because um, we're here to work with you guys, not sort of point fingers in different directions because um, you all know your community better. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Lily and Brandon. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you.